Welcome to Brand Builders TV. Deep dive topics, tools, and resources brought to you by global thought leaders from within the Brand Builders Club. This show gives you access to the strategies that you can use to move forward with ease and flow in every area of your life and business. In today's show, Lubna is going to show you an essential way to achieve your vision and impact. After completing the first three sessions that Lubna delivered in parts one, two, and three, you should now be clearer about your levels of optimism and resilience and ways that you can up-level these. You're now ready to integrate these into achieving the vision for your business. And to do this, Lubna is going to share with you in this session how to work in a focused and effective way so you don't waste time and effort. Learn it, model it, and get shit done. Let's go. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, wherever you are in the world. Um, it's uh, another session. It's another Thursday, 12 p.m. UK time, and I'm here live for the last part of the four-part series on how to set yourself up for success. Well, let's get started. You became an entrepreneur to make a bigger impact and have more freedom. You've been called to fulfill a purpose that is bigger than you. And you have got big dreams and big visions. But how do you make those a reality? How do you break that big vision down into something that you can start doing today or tomorrow? Uh, on this session, last part of the four part series, I am going to be focusing on that topic. Now, if you have watched parts one, two and three, you will know that I focused on the very first part, optimism. Part two, I focused on resilience, how to deal with setbacks and challenges. Last week, I focused on strengths, specifically your strengths. Each and every one of us has strengths. And all of these, and, and the, this session, I'll be focusing on hope. Now, it, it's not going to be hope like you know it. And maybe you even know the definition, but I'm going to share more about that in a minute. So welcome to Brand Builders TV. My, my name is Lupna, also known as the Accent Action Accelerator. And I love to mentor entrepreneurs to gain focus, clarity and momentum with a lightning speed. So they, they can achieve those big visions and big dreams in a fun and relaxed way. Because I'm passionate about busting the myth that hard work is not the only way to that leads to success. However, you define success for you because that's important. It all depends on you. And uh, if you were with us on part one, I asked you to define that for you so that you have your direction. So you know what it means to you and how that looks like. So in my opinion, I believe that working hard just only leads to things like burnout, prolonged stress. It impacts our health and mental well-being in a very negative way. And it doesn't have to be this way. I'm the living example of that there are other ways to enjoy working, to have fun working and making the impact that you desire to make. So last week I gave you all a mission, who here has done the mission? And if you're watching this on the replay, you might wanna go back to part three. I all gave you the mission to do the VIA test to discover your top five signature strengths and to share with us in the comments below how you were going to practice your signature strengths in the past seven days. That was the mission. So I am so looking forward to seeing who has accepted the mission and what have you gotten as insight. Because it's one of the most quickest ways that I've experienced and even my clients to tap into something that is so effortless to us but we get so much done in a, a very little time instead of working against who we are and what we're good at so if you haven't watched that go back to the recording on this page or on the YouTube channel called Brand Builders TV so let's get started because we've got short time together. So in the next 25 minutes, I'm going to get you focused and clear 
on how you can achieve those big dreams and big visions. So let's go and lovely to see Sally and Fiona live with me. I always love to have an audience. It makes this so much more fun than just me talking to a screen, talking to you about something that is dear to my heart. Now, you might have heard before that business or entrepreneurship is 80% psychology and 20% strategies, tactics. Now, one of the things that I find mind blowing after learning about this statement is that we focus a lot of our attention, time, energy and attention on the 20 percent, on the tactics and strategies. But if you've ever encountered something uh, like a limiting belief or an internal obstacle, then you know that that is what can get you, keep you stuck, keep you struggling, keep you not progressing in a way that you want to and feeling tired after a day, but at the same time wondering, what have I actually done? Now, if you recognize that, let me know, let me know. I know I'm not the only one in the world that has ever experienced that. And sometimes I still do. I mean, I'm a human being. I've, I've experienced a wide range of emotions and struggles just like any other human being on the earth. So this session is focused on hope. Now, whenever I use that word, people look at me and think, but hope is wishing. And it's not the definition that I use. Now, in the psychology, more specifically the positive psychology, there is a very specific definition to hope and hopeful people. Uh, they've been researched many times to see what the characteristics are of hopeful people, hopeful, successful people. And the best way that I can explain it without becoming too scientific -y on you is that hope, look at hope as, a, as an attitude, as a way of thinking that is, that's got its root in the expectation that the future will be positive and you believe that you can create your future. And I'll, I'll break it down a little bit more for you because this might sound abstract at this moment in time. Now, maybe you've uh, read the book by uh, Viktor Frankl, The Search of Meaning. He's a Holocaust survivor who spent many, many years locked up and he summed it up best uh, after he was asked, but how did you survive those extreme circumstances? And he says, without having a future to look forward to and to stretch to, the present becomes meaningless and unbearable. Uh, let that sink in for a minute. Without having a future to look forward to and stretch to, the present becomes meaningless and unbearable. Now again, Viktor Frankl is a Holocaust survivor, so he's been in extreme circumstances. And the only way that he could tap into is believing that he would survive and that we, he would have a positive future to look forward to as long as he influenced that way that he was thinking, the way that he gave meaning to the circumstances that he were at. The book is, is absolutely amazing. If you haven't read it, I wholeheartedly recommend you do. It will change the way that you look at things. So if you've been on sessions before, I'd like to tap into your self-awareness muscle a little bit so that you know where you're at in terms of hope and um, we've done that for optimism we've done it for resilience we've even tested our signature strength so we're going to do that for hope too now there are many tests out there but for the time that we are with each other i've got two questions for you so grab pen and paper and just put down the score you don't have to write the question down just put down your score on a scale from one to ten where would you rate yourself with this statement. So are we ready? So when you, this is question number one, when you are working on a major project, do you feel confident that you can achieve the, re, the goal of that specific project? 
Now again, rate yourself from a one to 10 on how confident do you feel that you can bring that project to fruition. And whatever your score is, do not judge it. This is a self-awareness piece that I want you just to think about it, to pause and think about where am I at? Now, it might be that you're thinking, oh, I've got a specific project in mind, but I don't really feel that confident that I'm going to be able to bring that to fruition in any way, shape or form. It might be that you've got a project in mind right now and you're thinking, oh, I can so do that. Whatever it is right now, I just want you to be aware of where you are at. It's very important so that you can take action and make the changes that you need if you're not happy with where you are at this moment. Sadly, thank you for scoring yourself and sharing it because I love to see uh, where you are at. So if you feel comfortable doing so, please share it in the comments. I love to see where we are at. So ready for question number two in our self-awareness assignment. The statement is, I am hopeful that I can somehow achieve the important goals in my business and life. So somehow, you might not know how now, but somehow you are hopeful that you can achieve uh, the important goals in your business and life. Philippa, welcome, lovely to see you. So much fun with audiences uh, on these videos. Um, and if you're watching this on the replay, I am so grateful that you're watching it because that means that you invest in your personal development and take the time to do so, which has the best return on investment, let's be honest. So, question number two. Uh, uh, the statement is, rate yourself from one to 10. I am hopeful that I can somehow achieve the most important goals in my business and life. And Sally, thank you for being vulnerable and sharing it with us. Now, again, whatever your score is, the, the purpose of these two questions is to make you aware of where you are today. Now, I'm gonna share some juicy golden nuggets to move the needle if you're not happy about your score now. And whether that is a five or an eight, if you want to be, be get on the higher on the scale, you're gonna love what I'm about to share with you. So let's just talk a little bit about how this plays out. You might, how am I gonna do this? Um, how about um, whether you've got a to-do list or a a calendar or a diary, whatever it is for you, is look at it. What is a task or an activity or a project that you're struggling with this week? You're really looking at it, maybe you're even looking at it on your to-do list and thinking, oh no, I'm gonna do that one later. Not in the mood for that in any way, shape or form. Uh, maybe you're thinking, oh my God, I'm not, I'm not progressing uh, enough on that uh, task, activity or project. Whatever it is, just keep it in mind for now and let's do this thinking exercise together so do you know that when you look at this task activity or project whatever it is for you do you know why you have why you want to do this task project or activity? do you know the why behind it have any idea when i ask my clients this question they usually come up blank they're literally thinking because it's a task or because my mentor told me that I needed to do this if I wanted to achieve anything. Or I don't know, it's just on my to-do list, but I don't know why. Now, keep that in mind. It's important that you'll be able to answer that question because it taps into what you might be struggling right now or why you might be procrastinating on the task, activity or project. So why does the task, activity and project matter to you? You have any idea? Uh, because if it doesn't matter, then why is it on your to-do list? So think about that. Now, another question that you can look at that task, project and activity you're struggling with is, do you know how you're gonna do it? Do you have any idea how you're gonna achieve or accomplish that task, activity or project? Let me know. 
It might be that you know it's important, you know you're the why behind it, you know why it matters to you because as an entrepreneur you want to make revenue so that you can make impact, so that you can achieve that very big vision and very big dream. But you might not know how. How am I going to do this? Now whatever it is for you, again, just make yourself aware of where your struggle is at specifically. So, um, let's dive into hope. Again, this is an attitude, a way of thinking, your belief that the future will be positive and that you will be able, you believe that you can realize this goal. Now, hope from the psychological perspective consists of three elements, three elements. The first one is goals. There are so many people in the world, whether you're an entrepreneur or a corporate professional, that do not set goals. You might set New Year's resolutions at the beginning of the year and uh, within usually on average within a couple of weeks uh, we've already forgot what those new year's resolutions were and we're back to where we were before we set them at all so it's important to have goals they give us focus they give us clarity they give us direction and setting goals is a skill a skill that you can master and there is a very big difference between a goal and a task. And what I see a lot of entrepreneurs do is when I ask them about their goal is they give me their to-do list. They give me a list of tasks they need to do. And that's not what I'm looking for when I'm talking about a goal. A goal is something that is meaningful that you want to achieve and it's a big result usually. Uh, that you can break down in sub-goals. But having the clarity of goals in your life for your life as well as your business is essential even if you don't know exactly how but knowing what you want to achieve is important so element number one is goals now as you are watching this whether you're with me here live or on the recording what is a goal you want to work on and whether you know it right now or you don't just think about it for a minute and write it down because if we don't write our goals down they don't manifest into reality so make the goal specific measurable and set a deadline so today is October 1st which marks the last three months of 2020 which at all accounts is a very remarkable year for the whole world it, we're probably going to look back to it and think what just happened in that year what have we been going through in that year and we're going to see a lot of the things that we were never able to see so in those in these last three months what do you want to achieve now it might be that you set an income goal you might want you might decide that you want to make i don't know fifty thousand in whatever currency of the country that you live in in the next three months it might be that you want to buy a house in the next three months you might be wanting to sell your house whatever it is for you make sure that it's specific that you know exactly what you need it's measurable and the deadline is the 31st of december 2020 and um also important that's why i asked you how do you feel about your goal and why does it matter do you know the why behind your goal is think about how you would feel if you would accomplish that so if you have an income goal think about how it would feel on when you on the 31st of december open up your bank account and see that number in front of you what would that feel like what how would that impact your life how would that impact your business what would you be able to do then that you'll not be able to do right now and make it as specific and sensory rich as you can have because the more you can embellish on that which might seem as a weird exercise to do but is very powerful for our brains so that they can support us in achieving the goal whatever it is and it's also it's very goal setting is very effective in improving your productivity so to make sure that you do the right things at the right time in the right way for you now, um, the 
Well, I see two challenges whenever I take someone as an entrepreneur through this exercise. One is how to set the right goals, because how do you know? It's the right one and it's the right one for you. Number two, how do you follow through on achieving whatever you need to do to achieve that goal? So we're going to take another step into how we can make sure that that happens. And uh, at this moment, again, self-awareness. How good do you feel you are at goal setting? How good are you? And if you want to rate yourself on a scale from one to 10, rate yourself. And again, whatever the score is, the purpose of this exercise is to make you aware of where you are at. Because if you know where you're at and where you ideally want to be, you can make decisions on how to improve that. And there are many ways you can improve your goal setting muscle. Because the more you do it and the more you practice it, the more natural it becomes. Now, another question that I ask my clients a lot is, do you enjoy goal setting? Because I love to dream big. I love to think about big visions and break that down into what I need to do. It's very enticing and exciting to do. Or, or it might be, and Philippa, thank you for engaging with me. Uh, or it might be that every time someone says set a goal, you get frustrated. Or you maybe get even, um, even how do I say this? What's the word I can use? Maybe you get frustrated, maybe you get angry because you don't want to set goals, um, whatever it is for you. Just think about how you feel about a fairly essential skill uh, in life and business. So, and the last thing I will share about goal setting is without goals, what I see people doing and entrepreneurs more specifically because I work with entrepreneurs is that you will occupy yourself with all of activities, with a range of activities that will keep you busy. And they're usually activities that you feel comfortable doing, but they're not supporting you in progressing on achieving your goals for your business and your life. And that just ends up being frustrating. You start to think that you're not good at this, but you're just preoccupying your brain. And that's what our brain wants us to do. So again, uh, can't emphasize it enough. Goal setting, set goals, be set the right goals and follow through on your goals. Now hope, that's element number one of hope. Number two is called willpower. And it refers to the motivation behind the goals. Because let's be honest, you can set the right goals, but if you're not motivated to achieve them, you're not going to do what is necessary on a day-to-day -day basis. So all of those tasks and activities are the ones that you're going to procrastinate on. You're going to let yourself be distracted in so many ways, especially now that the majority of us are at home. So maybe you'll want to do the wash or the ironing or all of the things that you usually do not enjoy doing maybe. You're going to do them right now because you're not motivated to do. And hopeful people are people that are very clear on their goals, element number one, and they're motivated to achieve them. There is no way that they will not achieve those goals. They get up excited every morning thinking, I'm going to be doing something that's going to move the needle on my very big vision and very big dream. So what is it to you? When you look at the goals that you need to achieve in your business right now, how motivated are you in achieving them? Maybe you're lacking a little bit of motivation. Maybe you've got extreme big motivation to do those. Whatever it is for you, make sure that you are aware of that. Now, element number three, three, we had goals, we had willpower, and the third is way power. One, which refers to how many different routes to achieving your goals do you have? Most of us set a goal and they're motivated to achieve it and then think this is the way that I'm going to achieve this goal. And as soon as an obstacle or a challenge gets in their way, they give up. Now maybe you recognize that. I've seen it with 
uh, a lot of entrepreneurs, specifically multi-passionate entrepreneurs just like me. They've got so many ideas and they easily feel overwhelmed and they think it's not achievable when they think of all of those ideas. And I'm reminded of one of my clients um, last year. She was telling me all of these amazing ideas and she had so much excitement around those ideas. But when it came to, okay, what do you need to do to achieve those goals, she was like, I can't, it's just too much, I don't have the time. And we literally went through an exercise that I do with, with my clients where we broke those down and really tapped into but how does it relate to your life vision, number one. But number two is what are different ways that you can achieve the goal because you might hit a setback or a challenge and you can do two things. You go through that challenge and setback, you crush it on your way or you can choose another path to achieve your goal in any way, shape or form. Now, hopeful people have different routes to achieve the goal and they've thought about those different routes. They choose to start on one, but as soon as they hit a setback or a challenge, they make that decision. I'm going to go through this. I'm going to deal with this setback and challenge head on. Or am I going to choose one of the other routes that I have? Now, it's important to realize when I talk about obstacles and challenges, and I shared this in part two when I shared about resilience and our resilience muscle and how we can up level this. Obstacles can be one of two things. They can be external, so something outside of you. The global pandemic is, is a very big one in, in 2020. Or it could be an internal obstacle. Those are even more impactful for most of the entrepreneurs that I work for because they've got a limiting belief or they are struggling internally. There's a mental picture or mental narrative running. So you make those distinctions. We tend, when we talk about setbacks and challenges, to talk about external obstacles. Now, most of the external obstacles are things that we do not have a lot of influence on. Some we do, some we don't, but the internal obstacles are something that we can have a lot more influence on, are sometimes the ones that keep us really stuck and struggling. Uh, so if we can tap into that and think be before it happens about the ways that we can do with it, we will be more likely to achieve our goals in a fun and relaxed way. So three elements, goals, setting the right goals, and how to follow through on the goals is a combination of willpower and way power. Those are the three elements that consist of hope. So again, remember the brain is like a muscle. The more we use it, the smarter it becomes. And struggling means that you're learning. And if you're stuck, there is something that is right. And it's very important that when you're looking at your task, activity, your project that you're struggling right now, Make a diagnosis. Just pretend you're a doctor for the next 30 seconds and make a diagnosis. Is it because you're not clear on the goal? Could be. And or you're not really motivated. It's not something that gets you excited. You don't know exactly why you're, why you're wanting to achieve this goal. Or it may be that you don't know how or that the how you came up with is not the how that's going to move you forward. And... There are several ways that you can deal with those, but it's very important that you diagnose what the cause is of the fact that you're struggling or that you're stuck or overwhelmed, whatever it is that you're feeling right now, that's not helping you move forward on achieving those goals, which I really want you to, because let's be honest, we all have a positive impact to make in the world, is that you know what's the real cause of the problem right now. Again, it might be that you're not clear on your goals. It could be. It might be that you're not motivated, excited about your goals, which can happen. We lose passion. We lose a positive energy around a goal. Just think of alternative goals. Um, and it might be that you do not know how or that the how that you came up with is not the how that's working for you because of setbacks and challenges you choose not to deal with or you can't deal with at this moment in time and it is very powerful to have different ways and as i wrap up i want to share with you a case study of one of my clients he knew exactly what he wanted to do he wanted to create an online program he was very excited about creating the online program 
But as we spoke, he found, I found out and helped him diagnose that it was all about he didn't know how. He had a couple of ideas of what he could do on a day-to-day -day basis, but it wasn't enough for him, enough clarity and focus to get busy. And he had tried one route and then got a setback and a challenge and just got stuck. Now, this had been going on for almost a year. Now, he procrastinated on this for a year and we had two sessions and at the last session, I just said, OK, what are th I want you to come up with three to five different ways that you can achieve this one goal. And each way, each route, we had about three to five actions or activities that you could do to achieve a realizing that online program that he wanted. Uh, and we drew it because it's very powerful to make it a visual statement. And at the end, he was like, I can do this. And you can see the excitement and the relief in someone's face when they see something that just became very achievable, very manageable, but also in control because at this moment in time, he knew if I get stuck again, I don't have to stay stuck. I can choose a different route. I now know what to do. If something happens, uh, then I will choose route two or three or four or five. It gives you so much more flexibility and it's one of the secrets behind how I get things done or how I can manage multiple projects at the same time. I've got different routes. Whenever something happens, I can change instantly. I do not have to stay stuck. So, ladies and gentlemen, it has been an absolute pleasure to deliver this four-part series on how to set yourself up for success. Now, I'm mindful of the fact that we are very short on time with our 30-minute sessions and it always goes faster than I had expected up front. Uh, but I've hoped you enjoyed the four traits and skills and success strategies that have been part of my practice for many, many, many years and have gotten me to where I am today and will get me to where I'm going in the future. So uh, I'm sure I do have good news, by the way. I do have good news. You're not, this is not the last time you will be seeing me. I've decided that I'm going to keep doing this on a weekly basis. So I will be back next Thursday, 12 p.m. UK time to share more about what I know. Now, I can share a lot of things. So if you've got any questions around productivity, performance, strategy, please let me know. Then I can tailor this around what you would like to know. For now, have fun, have an amazing day, and I will see you next week. Bye. I hope that you've enjoyed the show today as much as we've enjoyed making it for you. If you've got anything out of this episode, please do tell someone else how they can subscribe to the Brand Builders TV channel at youtube.com forward slash Brand Builders TV. Why not join us at our next Brand Builders Thinkubator, a global mastermind that we run every week to take away the loneliness of being in business on your own. For more information and to book your place, visit light.brandbuilders.club forward slash thinkubator. That's light.brandbuilders.club forward slash thinkubator. Until next time, be the ripple that you wish to see in the world and we'll see you soon.